Staying on theme, we're going to also focus on this EPA data because it's always good we make these learning videos and you stay in a constant data source that way everybody can follow along. Here we go back to our United States chart, which we built a learning video on how to build the EPA, is EPA 1 really, and the EPA analysis. And so what we're looking at with all these pollutions and pollutants, but you know, if you really think about some of these pollutants, we can actually just take a look at them for a second. Let's just drop the tier 1 detail. I put in the color, I mean, I'm not really put in the color. <laughs> Let me put the tier 1 description in detail for you can actually hover over and we can, yeah, you can see what it's doing. It's actually going through and it's doing all the different things. That's really what we want to do, right? Because you're not getting what we really want here. Um, this is not really the desired result. We're looking at stuff. We get the total emission sums. We get this, the, we're not really getting everything in the way we want to. Um, but you think about it. Maybe we put pollutant code into the colors. One of the things we have to do is learn how to filter these things in and out. It's not really effective. We can play with the chart and get more things to stack and you can see the individual components. But the way, better way to do it is to drag the pollutant code from the left to the right into filter. Let's just, you know, I'll pull it out and put it in. And it lets you pick all the different pollutant codes. So therefore, we'll actually just select them all at this point and say, okay. Now we have all the pollutant codes and we can change this entire view of the United States by looking at different things. You saw at first we weren't really doing it right, so adding the filter is the right way of doing it. The other thing is we're going to show the filter over here where we can actually get a good demonstration of what these are. So remember when we went over here to the other chart, we saw that in the description, what's the highway vehicles, prescribed fire, wildfires, what, you know, tier one def definition and those kind of things. And what is probably more helpful if we're able to really look at some of these and then look at it across all the sheets. That way we can actually apply the filter on and off. So we apply the filter here and it's on this worksheet. But you know, when you start doing really thorough and deep analysis, you don't want to just create objects in Tableau. You want to be systemic about it. You want to really think about how you're going to do it across sheets to make a more robust analysis. So you do that by clicking the down arrow and apply to worksheets. And you're not going to want to do it to all. You can use it against this data source or all related data sources at data level. But in this case, I want to apply it to select the worksheets. Where does it make sense? Well, I'm convinced in this analysis, high level analysis of the United States, I don't want to show certain pollutants. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. But I want to apply it. So what happens is, now when I'm sitting here and I look at each one of these, and I have to figure out what those are, maybe it's better, for example, you're looking at that, you can still see that I'm not really overly joyed with it. Maybe we just use a tier one. Oh, that's interesting. That's better. I kind of like this better because you can't really see what the other one is. So I'm going to remove it. You see, I have a whole issue with, let me show that filter. Now when I'm looking at pollutants, this stuff makes sense to me. I couldn't tell what those codes were before. So that's another design element choice, right? Do I really want to show codes out there? Do I want to create a joint field where I see the code and this? Yeah, I want to show the code in here. So building a filter requires some thought. When you filter, it, it's helpful to actually know what the filter is. Yeah, try and get over, there we go. Moving it over a little bit to adjust the filters. There's a lot that goes into selecting a filter. But now when I filter on something, I take it out, put it in, put it all. I can like filter on certain items. So I have the ability to do this. However, I can also apply to worksheets, select the filters, click, click, and now I can look at things and then I can change it and pick which ones I really want. Fuel combined, yep, these are all pollutants which are terrible. Metals processing, miscellaneous is kind of weird. We have to break that apart separately to understand what's in miscellaneous. Um, prescribed fire, sure, that's normal farming type activities. Or many, many reasons they prescribe sol solvent utilization, storage. Maybe I don't want wildfires. The wildfires are kind of natural in that regard. So you got to really think about what wildfires are. Like, for example, in Hawaii, when they had the volcanic issues and volcanoes going in, that creates a lot of fires. It's kind of a natural fire. It's not like we're going to control that from a human point of view. Um, 
very rarely can we actually control it. I understand one time they used the military uh, weaponry to create caves where we wouldn't roll through a city and go a different direction. But generally speaking, those fires, which are natural wildfires and things like that, can be, they're going to happen whether humans are around or not. Now, granted, humans do create fires, no doubt, and there are ways to clean up forests to do it, but we're changing the dynamic. But in fairness, again, when a natural fire happens, we also prevent that from going on as well. So barring fires, which is a different topic onto itself, and probably requires a deeper analysis, let's just say that this analysis is going to be the things that most likely influence pollution on a daily basis. And the other fires probably don't do it. So when you select it like that, you'll be able to take the pollutants, and you'll notice that it actually removes it across sheets. Now we have a different makeup of everything, and we can actually understand. You see the filters come across these streets, and it just comes over there, and we're able to look at it. And look, the pollutant code sitting up top. That's kind of funny, because you're not gonna know what that is. Um, in those regards, so you're able to go across these kind of things and create differently. Here, you notice that California actually turns out not as bad when we get rid of those forest fires. They had an awful lot of them. Texas, much worse far there. So now we have a different scale Texas shows up to be the worst state, and it's no longer California. But when you put forest fires in, California changes, so does Alaska. You can see the difference in the data. Now we have a, an analysis contributing to it. And you can call this a template, and then build your template around these analyses, and those kind of things. So I hope that this helps, because filtering across worksheets is a powerful element in that regard, and you can see how everything goes across. So I hope that this helps, but it's definitely creates a deeper analysis and then you're able to actually apply the filter and really look at things differently. Maybe you can group things, electrical utility, industrial fuel, maybe we just look at highway vehicles or, or things around vehicles. It depends what your analysis is going on, right? If you're looking at just highway vehicles and part of your solution, you may want to just do an analysis on vehicles and just not include everything else because you can't solve everything every time meaning to narrow down on your analysis, then break them into subsets of your analysis. I hope that this helps.